Hello and welcome to me reading the books that you guys have recommended to me. Subscriber recommended books. I'm gonna read them. I have decided I'm going to read three books you guys recommended to me. I asked in my first video on this channel, which is like an overview of my favourite books of all time, what books you think I should read, whether it's books that you think I would love based on what I already love, or if it's just completely rogue, your favourite books, things that you think I haven't tried, probably should try. I need to shut that cupboard, I'm going to go shut the cupboard, except I'm wearing my jammies on the bottom. So what I have done is I've gone onto a random generator wheel site, I've put every book you guys have recommended to me on this wheel, and I'm going to spin it, and the first three it lands on, I'm going to read them, basically. <laughs> a couple of these books I actually have already read since I made this generator, because I made this a couple of weeks ago, and then a couple of them I already had on my list. So it lands if it lands on like a couple of these, like Where the Crawl Dads Sing, for example, I'll just respin because I've already read that. I've actually got it right here. See? There you go, proof. Anyway, let's spin the wheel. I've just realised the screen recorded this really funny, it's gonna like cut off half the titles of these books but you know what for authenticity's sake I'm not gonna stop and then re-screen record and we're just gonna go with it. So the first one is The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. I'm really excited that I've got this one because I've read The Family Upstairs. I really 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 enjoyed that book and I wanted to read the sequel anyway so I'm gonna do that. Okay let's spin again. Second spin we have the Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, Hank Green? I'm pretty sure it's John Green. That is really, really exciting. I've wanted to read that again for ages. Oh my god, this wheel mwah, it is doing good things for me. And The Anthropocene Reviewed, I have wanted to read that for ages. It is the only John Green book that I actually haven't read yet. And the only reason I didn't read it straight away is because I don't like hardback books. I like to wait for them to come out in paperback. So hopefully I can get a paperback version of that and that'd be great. I'm actually going to try and get these books if I can on Vinted. Top tip, you can buy really, really cheap books on Vinted just from other people. Say just going on Amazon and buying brand new ones, why not get second hand books? And I do generally go to the charity shops, like charity shop second hand books a lot, but you can't like always get what you want in there. So top tip, Vinted for books. Right, let's go for the third one. The third one is, she's still spinning, oh my god it's a long spin, she keeps going, she keeps going. Convenience store woman, oh my god. Okay, again, this has worked out really well for me actually, because I'm not going to have to buy all these. Let me just get this. My friend Nicole will actually lent me this book literally last week, so that works out really well for me. This is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I wanted to read this for a while and I just hadn't got around to it and when I went around Nicole's house and I saw it on her shelf I was like can I just can I steal that <laughs> I'd like to steal it and read it so that's really exciting and that means I'm actually going to start with this one seeing as it's the only one that I've actually got on hand yeah I'm excited this is actually really really short so maybe I might actually sit down tonight and read it and see what I think how many pages is this it's tiny like 160 pages lovely stuff well I'm gonna read this tonight or over the next couple days and I'll come back and let you know what I thought of this one I'm gonna order the Anthropocene reviewed on vintage because I'm sure it's a very popular book I'm sure there's that on there and I'm gonna read The Family Remains I might even get that on my Kindle if I can I don't know if that's one that I want to have like a hard copy of but I do want to read it so that's that's a Kindle one. There's no logic to what I buy in like real life and what I buy on Kindle but some things just make sense to be Kindle books, I don't know why. Okay well I'll come back to you in a couple days when I've read Convenience Store Woman and let you know what I think. Okay so I actually finished this book, Convenience Store Woman by Siaka Murata a couple of weeks ago and it's taken me a while to sit down and actually film this because I couldn't really get my thoughts and feelings about this book straight. I, it just wasn't for me, I gave it three stars, I didn't hate it, I didn't love it, I just thought it was very much like, okay. I think this book is written for a very specific type of person with a very specific type of humour and like understanding of the world, and that just wasn't me. Um, If you're like a fan, the only way I can describe this book is if you're a fan of like quirky and absurdist type of humour, like, like Mighty Boosh kind of humour. I think you'll 
get this on a deeper level than I did. I just thought it was a bit weird. So this is a very short book, it's only 160 pages, it's set in Japan about a character called Kiko and Kiko is in her 40s and ever since she was 18 years old she's worked in the same convenience store doing the same shifts week in week out. This convenience store is like her entire world, she knows nothing beyond the walls of this convenience store to the point that when employees ask her like what are your plans for the weekend, what are you doing, or ask her about her personal life, she really hates it because she doesn't like being perceived as a human outside of the convenience store. And Kiko just can't understand like society's and her family's obsession with like getting a better career and marriage and children. She literally just wants to be a convenience store worker, that is all she wants out of her life and she's very content doing it. Um, if you read between the lines of this book, or even not so much read between the lines, but it's never like explicitly said, but Kiko is quite obviously an autistic woman, or at least like somewhere on the autistic spectrum. And I can't speak to that experience myself because I am not an autistic woman, but it's very clear that she kind of is. And I would be really intrigued to find out what actual autistic people's opinions and reviews of this book are, because it just made me really, really uncomfortable. And I can't quite pinpoint why, it just did. And I don't think, I wasn't uncomfortable because she's autistic, but she just has some really odd views on society that just, like at one point in this book, the best way I can describe this, at one point in this book, she was literally talking about like fantasizing, killing her own nephew or her niece, I can't remember if it's boy or girl, but she's like fantasizing about killing her nephew because he won't stop crying and like somebody's like can you make that child stop crying and so she thinks about getting a knife and just like killing him which is weird that's weird like there's parts of this book where kiko comes across like almost sociopathic with the way she like sees the world and sees other people and there's a big part of this book i don't really want to give away any like big plot points or spoil it at all um, but there's a character in this book who is very, very clearly an incel. He's a very, very creepy, disgusting man. And Kiko very much, like, takes him under her wing, I suppose, in a way. And to the point where I felt worried for her safety. Like, with every page I was turning, I was like, he's going to hurt her. He's going to do something bad. And, like, he made me really uncomfortable. But the fact that she also, like, didn't see a problem with him and the views he was expressing of the world made her, I know, I felt like I couldn't relate to her. Like with every turn of the page, I was thinking, I was like, he's gonna do something. He's gonna hurt her. He's like gonna do something bad. This is turning into like a horror novel. And it just made me really, really uncomfortable to read. Hence why it took me so long to read this book because I just, I didn't want to keep on reading because I just felt like something really bad was going to happen. And I don't know if that's just because I'm such a worrier. I worry about every aspect of my life. I worry about everyone else's lives constantly, it is my biggest flaw that, I don't know, I just found it really uncomfortable to just keep reading and also like this guy, he expressed some really concerning thoughts about the world and Kiko never like agrees or disagrees with him and I was like just say something but I don't think she saw a problem with it and clearly I think there's something to be said for the book because it provoked such strong emotions in me like it really did and even thinking about it now like it's like making me like get all like tight chested and panicky a bit um but i don't it, I, there, there are just no words for this book like i really am struggling to like articulate my thoughts in a good manner another reason i found this really hard to read is that kiko is very much comforted by repetition she likes the same things day in day out she does the same exact routine every single day and when you're reading a book about that, it gets quite repetitive for the reader as well. And so like, whenever I put it down, I didn't particularly want to lift it up again because I was like, oh, it's just gonna be the same thing. She's just gonna be working in the convenience store, like cleaning that aisle and then doing this work. And it just, it wasn't that compelling. I do very much see where Sayaka Murata was trying to go with this book. I think it was meant to be some sort of commentary on conformist society. Like you just do the things that you do in life because society tells you to do those things. And that's a whole commentary I could have personally on like, like being a queer woman. But I feel like this book either needs to be much shorter, it needs to be really, really condensed down to like 50 pages and really be a short story. Or if Murata really wants to like 
knowing you no know, hammering the nail about this like conformist society commentary it needed to be a more fully formed book it's just so short that i just didn't feel like it really like went there you know and i feel like there was so much more that could have been said that went unsaid there's no character arc in this book either which knowing what you know about kiko and her character it kind of makes sense or it very much makes sense but as a reader it's not very compelling to pick up and keep like turning the pages the humour in this is very, very deadpan, it's very absurdist. There are a couple of times I actually like giggled a little bit, but like in general, it is very absurdist, very quirky, just very, very strange. So all in all, I'm going to wind down this review by saying, I don't know what I think about this book, it was weird, but I think about it a lot. And that's saying something. Three stars. I've been sat on my computer working all day and i just like looked up and it's suddenly really dark in here like it's just gone really overcast and really cloudy and i've been meaning to film this all day and i've just been not doing it so i'm filming it right now before it gets any more dark and overcast <laughs> so if the lighting's a bit dodgy in here that is why i've tried to set up my like little light here hopefully it's all right i'm terrible with like lighting and cameras and all the tech side of youtube i genuinely it just goes so far over my head i just don't get it but anyway, this is my review of The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. I was so excited when this one came up on the little wheel because I was probably going to read this anyway. I didn't even know she'd done a sequel until I saw your comments on the video where I asked for your recommendations. So I was going to read this one anyway. So when it came up on the wheel, you know, that worked out quite nicely for me. I don't actually have the book to show you and hold in my hand. I feel like a bit redundant. I don't really know what to do with my hands. Um, I don't have it to show you because I read it on my Kindle because I think they only had hardback on Amazon or the paperback was like obscenely expensive. I'm not being funny. I'm not spending like 20 quid on a book. Um, so I got it on my Kindle and I read it on my Kindle, which I actually think is how I read The Family Upstairs as well. So that works out quite nicely. So The Family Remains is a direct sequel of The Family Upstairs. It follows off like pretty much to the moment the first book finishes, the second book picks up. And I must admit, when I heard there was a sequel, when I read in your comments there was a sequel, I was very baffled because I didn't really know what more there was Lisa Jewell could do with this story. I felt like the family upstairs really ended in a really nice way. It really rounded off all the characters. It There weren't any loose ends to sort of like pick apart anymore. And I was very intrigued as to how she could get any more mystery out of this book. And she must be some poor genius because there was enough mystery. There was more character development. I really, really enjoyed the sequel. Like I was reading reviews of this book and from what I can gather, Lisa Jewell literally only wrote this sequel because people love The Family Upstairs so much. And the fact that she was able to like pull all these storylines out of thin air and like just create more layers of intrigue and mystery, I just thought it was really clever. I suppose I should probably like tell you the plot of The Family Remains, but I don't want to ruin The Family Upstairs for anyone who hasn't read it. So if you haven't read it, maybe skip forward like 30 seconds. Um, but the family upstairs is basically a young girl, she's like in her 20s, Libby, finds out that she has inherited a massive mansion in Chelsea in London, obviously it's worth a lot of money. Just going to keep my computer on there because <laughs> that's lighting this side of my face. Um, so Libby finds out she's inherited this house and this house has a really, really dark history. And Libby was actually found in the house in her crib by the authorities when she was still a baby. And there had clearly been some kind of murder-suicide that happened in the house and Libby for some reason was still very well nourished she'd clearly been cared for but the people in the house have been dead for a very long time so the first book is Libby discovering her past discovering her family and it's like a multiple point of view kind of situation by the end of the first book all those questions that Libby had have been answered you know who her family are you know how they ended up where they did very neatly tied up with a little bow the family remains is about it doesn't really focus on Libby, it more focuses on Libby's uncle, Henry. And if you read the first book, you'll know that Henry is such a creepy character. He is still beyond creepy in this book, but you kind of like feel for him. Like he's a creep, but you're rooting for him, but you shouldn't be rooting for him because he is creep. But also like, he's the main character in this book, so you can't like get to see his motivations. And you feel sorry for him, because if you read the first one, you know what he went through and all that kind of stuff. So he's basically hunting out Phineas, who he is madly in love with and has been his entire life and Phineas moved to Africa so Henry's like on a mission to hunt down Phineas but because he's a little bit mentally unstable Henry's sister is also what's her name Lucy Henry's sister Lucy is like following Henry as he's following Phineas and it's basically like a cat and mouse game cat and mouse game 
Cat Mouse Chase. I do kind of wish that I'd reread or at least like refreshed myself on what the family upstairs was about before I started the family remains purely because I spent the first 25% of this book thoroughly confused. I was like trying to remember who the characters were. I was trying to remember what happened. I could remember like the basic things, but I couldn't remember like the little details that would like really help me understand what's going on. I don't think you have to read the first book to read the second one. It does say it's a standalone sequel, but I don't really see how it could be. I feel like you've got a much better understanding of the book if you have read the first one. Again, this book has multiple timelines and multiple point of views from different characters, so you're constantly like jumping back in time and then jumping to this character and this character. It is a little bit confusing at points, but Lisa Jewell does do a really good job of like helping you keep track of who's who and what timeline you're in. Um, you sort of like have to slowly piece together the timeline as you go through the book. She also introduces a new character who was kind of on the periphery of the first book that I thought was really clever. It really helped her sort of like round out this new mystery and this story that she's creating. What else? She writes like these incredibly complex characters and you really like get deep into their brains. Like I said, Henry is such a creepy guy, such a creep of a character, but you're like, you're in there with him and he manages to convince you that what he's doing is right, even though it's very clearly not right. I just think Lisa Jewell did a really good book. She just did a really good book. She did a really good job, is what I meant to say. Again, lack of caffeine. Um, would I recommend this book? Absolutely. I would recommend you read the first one first though, because standalone sequel, it is not, but it is a really good sequel. Solid four stars, I really enjoyed it. And so we come on to our final review of this video, which is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. And I have a lot of mixed feelings around this book. None of which I actually think are the book itself's fault. I'll expand. So The Anthropocene Reviewed is unlike anything I've ever read before. It's basically a series of essays that John Green has written about pretty much anything that he finds interests him in the Anthropocene era, which is like the current geological era. Sorry, I do actually have another cold. The sixth cold I've had in the last six months. I think I'm about to win some kind of record. I've been to the doctors, had blood tests, apparently I'm perfectly healthy. Um, I'm just now on a concoction of vitamins and I think my immune system just got destroyed by the lockdowns. I've always been really susceptible to colds, like my whole life I get so many colds, like much more than anyone else in my family or any of my friends. But this year it's just really taken the mick. It's not Covid, I actually did a test this morning. It's just your bog standard cold. I don't even know if you can hear, but I'm very bugged up. <laughs> So my main problem I think I had with this book was the format on which I read it. I read it on my Kindle, but this is not a Kindle book. I tried to actually order a proper hardback copy of this book on Vinted, but it just never turned up. Like, I don't think it was the seller's fault. I think he actually delivered it, but it was when there was all like drama with InPost and it just never turned up. So I ended up getting refunded for that, which is why this video has taken so long to come out, by the way, because I've been waiting for ages for this bloody book to turn up. And then it's so expensive on Amazon, I don't want to pay like full price for this book. I didn't think I was going to enjoy that much. That was my main problem, I think. So I bought it on my Kindle, which is like £4. But this isn't a Kindle book. This is the kind of book that you want to have on your bedside table or on your coffee table. That you can like pick up and peruse as and when you want to. It's the kind of book that I would have liked to have like just gone to the content, seen what all these essays are and just pick one that interested me. But because I read it on my Kindle, I very much felt like I had to just like fight through, read the whole thing at once because if I put it down, I knew I wasn't necessarily gonna pick it back up because not every essay was about things that interested me. And on Kindles, it's sort of harder to pick and choose what chapters you want to go to. So I just had to like sit and read it. And some of the essays are so interesting to me and others just weren't that interesting. Like there were essays that I loved on the plague, for example, like you know how much I find the plague fascinating. I spend so much time researching that like era of time. But there were other essays that I just didn't really click with, that I wasn't really interested in reading, but I just had to force myself through to get to the next one in case the next essay was something that I enjoyed reading, if that makes sense. He covers such a wide variety of topics though, I think there really is something for everyone in this book. So there's like science and nature and history and sociological things and psychological things and philosophical things, like a bit of everything. Um, but you have just got to like pick and choose, like you're not going to be interested in everything that he's interested in. And it struck me as a very personal book, he intertwines a lot of the essays with very personal stories. Which obviously I think is just a book that he wrote, I know it's just a book that he wrote in lockdown, he was at home just like 
typing out his thoughts and feelings onto paper and it got published but it was very personal and I don't know if I so much enjoyed that aspect of it or not but then again I think it might be quite cold and very to the point if it didn't have those personal aspects so I think it very much did depend on whether I enjoyed the like personal anecdote he was telling in the stories in the essays or not if that makes sense I really it's really hard for me to put my thoughts about this book into words because at some point I really really enjoyed reading it and at other points I just didn't care and I wanted to put it down but I had to like force myself through it. I think if you're just generally a nerdy person and you're very intrigued by the world around you you will very much enjoy this book. I am one of those people, I am very nerdy. It actually really made me want to write my own book of this type, like I don't know who would read it, nobody would be interested in reading it. I think a big part of the reason this got published and people actually bought it is because it's John Green and he's such a big name and like people really enjoy his writing style. I am one of those people, I know people make fun of John Green and his books but I personally have always enjoyed all of his books I've read. I think I've now read all of them. Maybe there's one I haven't read, but I, I don't, I've read pretty much all John Green's books. But I would love to write something like this about the things that like interested me, not necessarily to get published, but just like as a stream of consciousness kind of thing. It's such a cool idea and I'm really jealous that he got the opportunity to write something like this and have the rest of the world like read his musings, his ponderings and agree with them. Um, I did find that he used a lot of quotes from like other people in the book, people that I really hadn't heard from, I didn't know these people, I didn't really care about their points of views and their quotes, and like the occasional quote or like poem or like excerpt from an essay or a book, it's fine, but I felt like he did it a lot, and I was like I don't care about their point of view, I want to hear your point of view, like you're the person writing this, so I found that a little bit difficult at some points to get around, all in all, I give this like a three and a half stars. I did enjoy it. I feel like it's the kind of book that not everyone's going to enjoy every chapter. But I appreciate what he was trying to do. And some parts of it I know I'm going to go back to time and time again. And you know what? If I get the opportunity, if I see it in a charity shop, I actually think I will pick up the hardback version to like keep on my coffee table that I can just like flick through and reread really the chapters that interest me when I want to on my own terms, you know? Also, a lot of people told me that the book actually made them cry. I don't see that. I didn't find it a particularly emotional book. There is a part where he talks about a friend of his who passed away, and that was quite sad, but I still didn't cry, but maybe other people have a lot more feelings than I do. Um, also, it is a podcast. The Anthropocene Reviewed is John Green's podcast that he then wrote a book of the same title. I'm going to be very intrigued to listen to that podcast. I don't know how I've never heard of it before, but I'm going to listen to podcasts because I can like pick and choose the topics that I want to hear about and I'm excited for that. So there you go, there are my reviews of three books that you guys recommended to me and you know what, I think it was very successful, I did enjoy all three of those books, kind of. I think my favourite was The Family Upstairs, no, what was it, The Family Remains, but they were good, they were fine, like I didn't hate any of them and you know what, I'm going to do it again, I'm going to read three more of your recommendations. I think I'm going to pull back on the recommendations from my last video where I asked for your recommendations, but if you've got any more that you want to recommend to me, stick them again in the comments down below and I'll put them in a new wheel and I'll do another one of these videos, probably in a couple of months. <laughs> it takes me a while to get around, like I've been like dispersing the recommendation books with books that I want to read, so that's why it's taken me a while to get around to doing this. Also because the Anthropocene Review just took ages to be delivered, that was the whole thing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!